everyone, Mary Lou here uh, with some uh, fun tips, ideas for homeschool using our Cricut today. And I love everything homeschool. I love all things about school. For many years, I have been a certified teacher uh, working in the public school. I've worked in private schools, religious schools. I've homeschooled my own kids for a period of time. Um, and my last job with the uh, public school over the last five years, I helped develop a program that integrated both homeschool and public school where students would come to me. I got to teach every subject. So I have a lot of experience with all things uh, that have to do ed with education. And it is one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. And so today I want to share a couple of yeah, two or three, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Thanksgiving projects that you can do with homeschool. This would also work for a public school teacher if you have a cricket and uh, because it's so easy to cut multiples with a cricket. And uh, other videos will be coming with education ideas, tips and tricks, organizing yourself because homeschool is not an easy gig, I know, but it is incredibly rewarding. And can be very frustrating at times. So um, please subscribe to my channel. I'll share with you some of our adventures over many years. And I'll share with you some of the things that work and then didn't work uh, in my family. And working with homeschool kids that were from a rural community, uh, these kids often, especially in the winter, couldn't even come down to school every day. Some of them came to school on snowmobiles, skis, in the snowplow truck. I mean, it was interesting and I loved it so much. Now I have moved, so I'm not doing that anymore, but I want very much to share what I've learned over many, many years of education and homeschool and working with children and developing curriculum. I've worked with hundreds of different curricula from many different companies companies. And I know that there's some wonderful things out there. And then there are some things that aren't worth using at all, and that are actually discouraging and disheartening. And so stay with me, subscribe to the channel, leave comments and questions below. I've been a homeschool consultant and worked with hundreds of families. And so leave your questions below and I will get around to answering them. But for now, I'm going to share my screen and then let's get busy on some Cricut projects that you can do with your students. So here I am in Cricut Design Space and I'm going to come up here to the right and go to New Project so that I have a blank canvas. And then I'm going to go to Projects because I want to do two things that are already available uh, in Cricut Design Space and then um, We'll, we'll go ahead and do one of my own that I'm going to customize based on what I learn as I do these other two that Cricut has already designed. So I'm going to type in, put in, is turkey, because that's exactly what I want. And there it is. So we're going to do this turkey lollipop holder. Now, I've looked at it before, and I know that there are a couple of things that I need to customize because there are certain things I actually don't yet have uh, with Cricut. So if you look at this image, you'll see that right here in the middle on that square part is a score line. Well, I don't have a scoring blade. And so I'm going to come over to the right and click on score and just back backspace that and it'll get rid of those four lines. And I'm also, uh, I don't yet have the pins that go into the Cricut machine uh, that draw those little eyes. So I'm coming to pen, highlighting that, backspacing it. So it gets rid of those things because I will just draw the eyes on there. Okay, so now I can go ahead to make it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to cut it on a mat because I'm going to be cutting these out of cardstock. And I want to do four copies. So I'm going to come to project copies here on the top left. I'm going to put in four and then apply. And then it will show me what colors I need. I'm going to need two pieces of red. I'm going to need a brown and a yellow. And so I'm going to go ahead and go through and just start right here. And it will talk me through everything I need to do. Uh, it tells me what I need to plug in, 
that I need to turn on my power. And then uh, I have the choice of materials. So my, I have a couple of things in favorites. Uh, you can go to popular materials, but I use cardstock a lot. So I have that right there in my favorites. Then it'll tell me exactly what I need to do. I need to load my mat and continue. Okay, so let's get the paper ready and get our mats going. So to do all three of our projects today, um, we are going to use several different colors because it's, it's fun when it's colorful. And I'm getting them, a, a lot of them, out of this um, basically notepad of cardstock. It's from Colorbock, and I don't know where I got it. I've had it for a long time, but I do like the bright, uh, vibrant colors. So the colors I'm using today are from the Colorbock is, um, I wonder if that's book. It's got that umlaut, so maybe it's book. Red, orange, green, yellow. And then from my cardstock stash, I have a lime green, a, another shade of yellow, and a brown that are all coming from my regular stash. Okay, now we're going to do the second uh, little lollipop holder that is available in Design Space. And so, once again, we're going to projects. I'm not going to worry about this turkey here. I'm just going to go to projects. And this time, I'm going to type in pumpkin. And I've looked through a whole bunch of these to get an idea of which ones I want to make. So we're going to do this pumpkin lollipop holder. And I'm going to go to customize again. And it's asking me if I want to replace what's sitting there on the mat on the canvas right now. So I am going to replace it because I'm finished with the turkeys. And so now here comes the pumpkin. So the same customizing I need to do since I don't have the pens or the score blade. I'm going to come to score and I'm going to go to pen. And on each of those, I'm going to backspace those so that we no longer have those. And then it won't hold up my printing. I'll go to make it. And just as I did on the other one, I'm going to choose the mat. I'm going to do four copies of that one. And then it will show me exactly what to do. So I'll push continue and carry on. And so let's go ahead and do the printing of the pumpkin. Okay, now let's do our custom designed project. So this time I'm not going to go into projects because I'm creating my own. I'm going to go into images and I want to do an ear of corn. So I, I want a, a grouping of things that make me think of Thanksgiving. And I want to use this uh, picture of the corn right there, highlight it, add it to the canvas. There you go. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is resize the whole thing so that it coordinates well with the other two. And I did some measurements on both the turkey and the pumpkin. And so I'm going to resize this so it's just right around four inches, about two inches wide and about four inches uh, tall. So that's all resized and uh, done. So I need to customize this so I have a hole in the middle where the lollipop will go. Now I can't just come over and punch a hole through this whole thing because you can only slice two layers at a time. And so what I'm going to do is ungroup this. And then I can pull part pieces apart. So I'm going to pull these front two leaves together. And I'm going to go ahead and make them, group that as best I can. And I'm going to uh, group them all into that lime green color right there. And then uh, I don't need it to be in two pieces. So I am also going to weld that. Now what that does, you notice that the line that separated them is now gone and I can now move it as one. And I've already resized the whole group so I know that we're at the right size. So now let me pull this one over 
And then I'm just going to pull these other two. This last one, I am going to weld that because I have actually two different cuts. And you can see that over here on the right. But I don't need that much detail. So I'm going to weld that piece. And I'm going to leave it the dark green color. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is punch out that hole for the lollipop in each one of these. So I'm coming to shapes, and I'm going to pick a circle. And when I measured the turkey and the um, pumpkin, I saw that they were right around one and a quarter inches in that circle. So what I'm going to do first is kind of figure out where I want that circle to be. So I'm just going to restack these two just for a second so I can just have a view. And I think I'm going to put that circle right down there, kind of at the spot where the corn would kind of bulge out a little bit more at the bottom. It's a little bit bigger. So I think that's where I'd like that. So now that I know where I want the circle to be, I can go ahead and uh, move that top layer because remember, I can only slice through two at a time. So once I have that set, I can highlight those and then come down to slice down here at the bottom. And if I uh, do slice, then what happens when I pull this away, you see there's the, the hole right there. Now, under this, you'll see the, the piece I sliced out. I no longer need that. So I'm just going to get rid of that. So now, so that I can make sure I always get that slice in the correct spot, I'm going to go ahead and stack these two pieces, bring my circle back in here, line it up. And then I can pull this one away because it's already sliced. And then let's go ahead and slice the green. So uh, highlight it, slice, and then, oops, then you can pull that green away. And then there's that green bit that I no longer need. So I'm getting rid of that. All right. Now I need to punch the hole in this other yellow piece. So I'm going to drag it over here and it's going to go behind the green like that, okay, so that I can see it. And then I'll, I'll go ahead. Oh, I want to move this to the front. So I'm coming to arrange and I'm going to say uh, send to the front on arrange. And then my dot, I will be able to see. So I'm going to line it up inside that green piece, pull the green away, and then it shows me exactly where it needs to be sliced on that piece. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that, come down and slice it. Then I've got, now look what happened to my slice. The only thing is my circle got a little bit uh, sliced funny. I can, I can get rid of these pieces. So what I'm going to do, because my circle got sliced and I want it to be a perfect circle, I'm going to come back in, get in my circle, change it to one and a quarter by typing the size up here. Now I can do this last piece of green right here. And it's going to be a little tricky. So I think I'm going to go ahead and pull it right behind the other big green part. So it's completely hidden except for where the slice is happening. Bring in my circle. And go ahead and let's highlight. Oh, wait. First, I need to pull away my green one, don't I? My dark green. So let's put that here. And then I'm going to slice that. Okay. Now, when I pull this away, it has sliced it, the circle out. But then it leaves this weird little triangle piece. Now, this circle. I don't need any more. I'm just getting rid of that whole thing. But I'd like to repair this because once I stick it together, that's going to look a little funny. And that's almost a triangle shape. <clears throat> so here's an idea for how to repair uh, funny little things that happen when you slice. So I'm going to just make that quite a bit smaller. And in fact, I'm going to rotate it so it can come and just fit right over that spot. It's going to be a little hard to see. 
going to rotate it just a bit more and come up. Okay, so that whole um, little chunk is covered. So what I want to do now is weld those together because when it cuts, I want it to be clear. So I can see I got, I, I probably brought it up a little too far. Okay, so basically it takes away that weird little hole. And I actually can, now that I can see that, I can fill that in very carefully. I can come over once again with my circle, resize it to 1.25. And then I could bring that hole back in here once again and make sure... And then, and then go ahead and do a slice again. And then when I pull that out, see how it just, uh, let me get rid of all that. It just rounds up that hole perfectly. Okay. All right. So I've got all my holes. Now, all of these three over here are ready to go. But I need the part that folds over like we did in the turkey and the pumpkin. So I'm going to take this green one and I'm going to duplicate it. And you'll see the second one come up. And then I'm going to flip it or, uh, vertically so that it can uh, be right here with the other one. And to get this lined up nicely, I'm going to just put the edges of both right on my six inch mark here so that so that I know that when they when it folds, they will be lined up just right. Okay, but what I'm missing here is that fold area. Remember that from the turkey and the pumpkin that had the score lines that we took away when we customized it? Well, we need to insert that back into here. Just getting this. I just feel like I need to line it up a little better. There we go. So, I'm going to grab a shape again, and this time I'm grabbing the square, and I need it into more of a rectangle, so I'm going to unlock it, and I'm just going to get this until it's about the size and shape that I would like it to be. When I looked at the turkey and the pumpkin, it was right around a half inch, so I think I've got that a little big. There we go. Something like that. And we'll line it up in just a minute. But what that that bit also needs a hole in it. I'm going to turn this one to green so that I can see my hole. I'm going to grab my shapes again, bring a circle over. And this is a very, what I need is a very tiny circle. So I'm going to go down to just like a quarter of an inch. Pretty small. Bring that over to here because I need to put a circle right in the middle. But so that I don't have to get all de uh, involved with centering, I'm going to go into a line and just do center. And you see how it moves that dot right to the center. Then I'm going to go ahead and do the slice of this before I even move it, get it into place. We're going to slice out that hole, and then I can move this into place and get rid of this. Okay? Now, I'm going to position this on my top part right there, and then I'm going to very carefully slide this up, trying really hard to keep it on that six-inch line until we have the connection right there. But I want this to cut all as one piece. So I'm going to go ahead and weld that. So this is going to be the outside part that folds. Everything else will be placed on top of that. And so I have everything I need so I can go straight to make it on a mat. And then, of course, uh, I, I'm going to do the four here as well. And you'll see it, it duplicates that on all four mats. And then I can go ahead and get that cut. Then we'll see our original design uh, being made. Okay, so stay tuned for the next project where we're going to use these dots 
to also do a fun little art project for Thanksgiving. Okay, now that you have a whole bunch of colors of dots, let's talk about some fun fruits that you can make with those. And these, I would let your kids uh, use their imagination rather than you showing them, but I'm going to show you some ideas so you know what I mean. So I'm going to lay out, I might throw in a couple of different shades of yellow here, here and there. But if I lay these out in kind of a long, thin line, maybe another down here, and if I throw in a brown one right up there, <laughs> and of course I'd adjust those around, but I can make a banana. Okay, so that's an idea. Then there's also... Uh, here's here's one of my favorites. If I just lay a bunch of these around, I bet you can already tell where I'm going with this. And this one is one of the th ones that look most like what it is. And then I also have a few little sticks here, basic shapes. And then you slip that in there. And I have, yeah, you can guess it, grapes. I could also do that with the green ones or even the red ones. Okay, so how about, here's one that I think is kind of fun. Let's get that all laid out like that. And then we'll come in right across here. We need, we need one more green one up here, I think. And you have a piece of watermelon. I could even come back with a little brown bit and, you know, throw in some of those. And then I have watermelon. Okay. But I think this is a really fun way for kids to start to uh, observe and use their imagination. And so have them make their fruit and not tell you what it is. And they can, they can quiz each other on the different fruits they can make. Let's try just one more. Let's bring our, our blue. We could even maybe mix some purple. And these are all going to basically stand alone. And then if I take these same brown bits and put them in there. Can you tell what I'm making there? There. And then we have some, just a bunch of blueberries. So you see what the, so that's basically the idea, is to give the kids some uh, dots of a whole bunch of colors and then let them come through and do some arranging and, and see if they can uh, arrange some things so that you can guess what it is Let's put some varying colors in there. And I don't know, this one's a long shot. If you can guess, it's not grapes. And it might have a few little specks and they're usually kind of, I don't know if you can guess what that one is. <laughs> Make a comment down below and see if you can guess what that last one is. And also, um, if you go to my uh, Facebook group, it's called Coming Home. You could share pictures of some of the ideas that you or your children have come up with for that same project. And so, there's an idea for all of those dots. Share what you have and I hope you like that idea. Okay, so here is our finished dot art fruit. Can you tell what each one is? So you make yours, and then show a picture or post it, or you can make a comment down below. Have fun!